In the previous episodes in this series, we've been taking a journey to cut through the hype and get down to the nitty gritty so that anybody, regardless of background, could understand a bit about how AI works. In the last episode, we looked at artificial neurons and how they're actually very simple mathematical functions that can have their internal parameters fit so that they can give the desired output. And this is a process that was called learning, which gives rise to the term machine learning. With just a single neuron, we saw how we could fit numbers together to figure out the equation of a line. Now that's useful, but it is limited. So in this episode, we'll explore how to take that to the next level with an exploration into how neurons can be networked together to learn more complex patterns and thus unlock scenarios like computer vision or natural language processing. Now, the idea of a neural network comes from understanding how your brain works. Now, this shows a simulation of the brain, and it's from a fun interactive site that I've shared in the description below. You can drag and drop neurons to form a network and see how information moves along in the network of your brain. On the other hand, an artificial neural network emulates this in a more primitive way. Neurons are gathered into what we call layers, as you can see here and each layer accepts inputs only from the previous layer like this. And then it only passes to neurons in the next layer like this. If each of these so-called neurons is simply a mathematical function that can learn parameters, then the network can figure out the parameters for each layer to get the desired outputs for a set of desired inputs. Now this means we have to think about how we manage our data to format it into a way that an artificial neural network can understand. So for example, say we wanna do a computer vision experiment and see if we can create a neural network that understands the difference between a cat and a dog. The neural network will be designed to only understand two things, whether an image is of a cat or whether it's of a dog. So our output would need to have only two neurons. So let's make it so that one of them outputs the value one if the picture is a cat, and the other one outputs the value one if the picture is a dog. Now remember this diagram? You gave it the data, you gave it the answers, and the ML algorithm figures out the rules. In this case, the answers are the desired values of the neurons. So one and zero top to bottom if it's a cat, and zero and one top to bottom if it's a dog. So we could say that our answers look like this, one zero for cat and zero one for dog. Now this is a process that's used a lot when people build AI systems, and it's called one hot encoding. You have an array representing the output neurons and they're all zero except one of them, and that one is hot, which gives it the name. So the idea now is exactly the same as before. You input a picture of a cat, and you tell the neural network that the desired output is one zero on the output neurons. And then you show it lots more pictures of cats and dogs, and you go through the learning process. When the data coming in looks like this, adjust your parameters so that the data going out looks like this. And the computer does the same process of making a guess about the parameters, calculating the accuracy of that guess over all of the data, and using the results of that to make a better guess. Now you might be asking, wait a minute, Neurons take numbers as input, and he's only got four of them. So how does that figure out the values in a cat or a dog picture? And you'd be right. I'm just showing this as a simple illustration. The network to learn the contents of cats and dogs pictures is much larger and more sophisticated. It'll have many, many more neurons and layers. But here's the important part. The principle is exactly the same. So let me show you a real computer vision scenario that was state of the art just a few years ago and how this principle is simple yet cutting edge. Here's some pictures of clothing, things like t-shirts, dresses, and shoes. With the principle of machine learning and neural networks we've been discussing, a computer can learn how to tell the difference between them. Let's take a look. First of all, we'll need a neural network. It will have inputs and outputs, so to design it, I always like to look at the outputs first. There are 10 different types of clothing in our data, so we need 10 neurons on the output, and we'll encode the answers, sometimes called labels, of the data so that each neuron represents a clothing type. So for example, boots are number six, dresses are number three, and so on. So we can one-hot encode our answers like we did before. Now let's take a look at the pictures that make up our data. Now these are pretty simple pictures, and each one is 28 by 28 dots, where each dot is a grayscale, so the value zero is stored in the computer for black, 
the value 255 for white, and everything between is a shade of gray. So at 28 by 28 pixels, we only have 784 pieces of data for each picture. Experiments have shown that a neural network with only two layers and 20 neurons on the input and 10 on the output, remember that's because there's 10 types of clothing, is actually enough to handle this. So the 784 pieces of data representing each picture are fed into a layer of 20 neurons. These 20s output are fed to the 10, and the network will figure out what makes a shoe a shoe very quickly using the same process that we've been talking about. Each of these 20 neurons will guess its weight and its bias, as will each of these. All of the images will be fed in and the answers received by calculating the result from the weights and the biases will be measured for accuracy. All of this information will be used to get a new guess and the data will be measured using that. And in just a few seconds, a neural network will learn to determine the differences between the images. I cover coding this kind of thing in my ML Foundations course right here on the Google Developers channel. So if you want to learn how to do it, but you can see here how the computer learns. Each of these lines represents a pass through the data where it set the parameters, calculated the results from its guess, and then on the next line, also called the epoch, it repeated the process. Over time, you can see the loss goes down, which means the parameters were learned that meant that this neural network got better at determining what's a shoe, a shirt, a dress, or any of the other items of clothing in the data set. Now this had pretty simple data and it was a pretty simple neural network. As your data gets more complex, like color images that are much larger, then so will the network. So for example, the network that can do diagnosis of retina scans looks like this. It's pretty much the same thing, it's just bigger. It uses a few different layer types than the simple neurons I showed you. But the important thing is that the principle of how it works stays the same. Whether you're fitting a line, seeing simple images like these fashion ones, or building a medical diagnosis system for diabetic retinopathy images like these. So please like, share, and subscribe to the Google Developer Channel to learn more, but most of all, please enjoy this series.